In this video, we're going to look at how to determine spot rates from forward rates so that we can calculate the price of a bond. Because we saw in the last video that spot rates are really helpful for discounting cash flows at uh, different times, which is exactly what's happening with coupon bonds. So we've got our $1,000 bond. It's paying 9% annual coupons, just like last question. Um, and it is a three year bond again. So I'm going to do our cash. Our, uh, that's a little bit off. I'm going to do our timeline. So one, two, and three. Um, yes, so this is a three-year bond. Don't think I actually mentioned that, but we're given three years worth of rates to figure out, so it couldn't really be anything else without any more information. So this is a three-year bond. Uh, the cash flows are going to look like this. Again, $90 coupons, and then at the end, it's 1090 because we're 9% on the $1,000. Um, now, let's see what we're given. The spot rate of year one is 6%. So we know anything discounted from time one back to time zero has got to be discounted at 6%. That's what we said a spot rate is. It tells you the year out in the future to focus on. Any cash flows happening at that time will be discounted annually at that spot rate. Then we're given a one-year forward rate one year from today. So that's tricky language, but what that means is that literally one year from today, so instead of at time zero, at time one, the one year rate, so the rate that is uh, one year out from there, anything happening in that time will be discounted at 11%. So literally from time two to time one, um, it'll be discounted at 11%. It also says, uh, the forward rate, the one-year forward rate is 13.6% two years from today. So again, two years from today, we're going to go to time two, and then it's the one-year forward rate from that time. So anything between time two and time three will be discounted at 13.6%. Now, that's really helpful, but what we need are spot rates in order to determine the price of the bond. So we need, we've got the one-year spot rate, we need a two-year spot rate. In other words, a rate that says anything that happens at time two, like this $90 cash flow, what should it be discounted back to get all the way back to time zero? What rate? Well, if we think about that 90, uh, it's got to be discounted. That 90 is going to be discounted by one plus whatever that two-year spot rate is squared, right? We always do that. Take the two-year spot rate and square it because it has to come back for two years. That's got to be equivalent to discounting it one year at a time. So we said anything from two to one is going to be using 11%, and then anything from one to zero will be using 6%. So 1.11, the 11%. And then again discounting by the one year spot rate. These have to be equivalent. So what we can do is we can cancel the 90s and we can just set the rates equal to each other. So 1 plus S2 squared must equal 1.11 times 1.06. You can also think of this as going forward. If you were to invest today, you can either earn 6% and then 11% or some level rate, some spot rate for two years. So S2 is going to be the square root of 1.11. I'm just isolating for S2 here. 1.06 uh, minus 1. And we get a spot rate, for a two-year spot rate of about 8.47%. So again, that's this blue line here. It says if you take that $90 cash flow in time 2 and discount it at 8.47% for two years, it's the equivalent uh, based on those forward rates. Now we also need a three-year spot rate because we want to discount this 1090. I'll use black for this. This 1090 all the way back to time zero. So normally we would say, okay, 1090 divided by one plus, I'll call it the three-year spot rate, cubed. And how are we going to figure this out? Well, this has to be the same as discounting the 1090 one year at a time. So again, 1.136, because it's 13.6% uh, to get from 3 to 2. Then discount it 1.11. Then discount it 1.06. So the three years, the two forward rates and the one-year spot rate, 
must be equivalent to just the three-year spot rate for three years. Again, we don't have to worry about these because they're the same. So I will get S, I'm going to isolate for S3. This will equal 1.136 times 1.11 times 1.06. These are the three rates. It's all going to be taken to the power of 1 over 3. That will get rid of the this 3 here as the exponent. And then minus 1. So we get S3 equals about 10.15%. So I've now got my three-year spot rate, my two-year spot rate, and the one-year spot rate was given, so we can discount all three individual cash flows at their own rates. So to get the price of the bond, that's just the present value of the future cash flows. So it's going to be the first 90 discounted at the one-year spot rate for one year, plus the second 90 discounted at the 8.47. I'm rounding here, but I'm actually keeping the values in my calculator. Uh, to get an exact answer, and then I'll round at the very end. Uh, so that's 8.47% for two years. Remember, that's what a spot rate is. And then the final 1090 divided by 1.1015, because that was the 10.15% that we just found, for three years. That was the three-year spot rate. Remember, price of a bond is just the present value of the future cash flows, and they're all discounted at their individual spot rates. Calculate this all together, and we get the price of the bond is 976.89. So forward rates are these kind of predicted spot rates as you move off of time zero. So as you move forward through time, what will the new spot rates look like? And the spot rates can be calculated straight from the forward rates because there has to be an equivalent uh, sort of single rate used that's the same as using all of the forward rates through time. Hopefully you found that helpful. You can always send us more questions. Info at ArnoldTutoring.com. Thanks.